everyone welcome back to my channel today's video is on how to get your gerberas to flower more or to reflower once they've flowered the first time these gerberas I got from Bunnings and when I got them they were in full bloom this one now has got three new flowers so I'm just going to give you some tips on how to get them to to reflower but also to get them to flower more You've got this one here that's, you can see the flowers are coming out. So there's one, two, oh look there's one in here as well, three, that's a new one. These flowers here are new, they're like the second lot of flowers since I bought them, yeah? So they had the original flowers from when I bought them, that those flowers died and now these are the new ones. And then you've got um, this one here. You can see that the flower buds on this one is starting to form, but it hasn't come out yet. And this one here has been inside and it hasn't formulated any new flowers yet. It had less sun. There's a few things in taking care of the gerberas. That you want to do to get them to be really healthy and to flower more. Gerberas love a lot of sun okay so put them in the sunniest position that you've got. They do need full sun. I've actually got quite limited sun in my home. I would say that they get like half sun I guess. I get some morning sun um, and they're still flowering so that's it's pretty good. Uh, a lot of a lot of light but you, at the very minimum you have to give them a lot of light. With the gerberas, they actually need a lot of watering. Well, plants that flower in general need a lot of water, but these plants in particular need heaps of water. If it's a sunny day, you need to water them in the morning or they will wilt. If it's a particularly hot day, you might have to water them twice, okay? Especially if they're like not in the ground. If they're in pots, you probably have to water them twice if it's a really hot day. I've actually got these gerberas in the self-watering pots and because I originally when I got them I had them only in the normal pots that they came in and yeah it, they didn't do too well in that because even if you water them in the morning by the time you get to the afternoon they they would have wilted already yeah so basically I put them into the self-watering pots and they've been doing really well since then it's a lot less work if you've got the self-watering pots it's, I tend to water these every day in the morning before I go to work and they are doing really well as you can see. Watering is key, you, so they need a lot of sun and they need a lot of water. The other thing is you want to give them some fertilizer. You can do it through a spray, like a, a leaf spray and I put water plus Epsom salt. Epsom salt has the mineral in it that they need to um, photosynthesize better you can get epsom salt like at bunnings or you can get it at coles or whatever yeah epsom salt is like a fertilizer this spray can has epsom salt in it and it's also got a little bit of the thrive multi-purpose fertilizer what i recommend you do is with fertilizing just don't overdo it because if you overdo it you can actually kill the plant you, you got to be really careful with fertilizing I would fertilize these plants every two weeks and when you do the spray I would recommend that you do half what is recommended on the packet. You can't be too careful with this sort of thing. You can kill them by too much love sort of thing yeah. So you, over watering them will kill them and also over fertilizing. Over fertilizing is probably one of the worst things you can do to a plant okay so just to be safe just use what is whatever is recommended just do half like this spray can is like what it's one liter i just put like you can put like two teaspoons of epsom salt in here or you can put one teaspoon i put, put half a teaspoon of thrive multi-purpose um, liquid fertilizer okay so now with this spray can you can spray the leaf the plant will take it up 
through their leaves. Or you can even just like, you can just pour the whole thing into the plant if you want to as well. Okay, so either way, the plant will take it up into its system. If you do it through the leaf, it's probably going to be quicker. I'm just going to give this plant a bit of a spritz dose. A spritz spray. So you just, just attack all its leaves. You know, just make sure every leaf's covered sort of thing. And you'll find that it will love you for it. Okay, so that's that. That's that one. I'll just do this one as well. The other thing that you want to do is you want to go underneath the plant and you want to like find any yellow leaves and if there are any yellow leaves you want to pluck them off there's this leaf here that's sort of slightly going yellow but i'm not going to take it off quite yet because it's not quite yellow yet i'm just going to leave this one this one doesn't have any and anyway it's flowering quite nicely anyway so it doesn't really need to do it this one here um That's it. There's a yellow leaf there. Just pluck it off. But do the one, do the leaves that are at the bottom. Okay. Just not. There's an, There's another one here. And so, just take all the yellow and any dead leaves off the bottom bit. So what that does is uh, reverse the energy of the plant away from these leaves into making flowers okay so that's how you get more flowers by um, telling the plant that you don't want it to put all this energy into the leaves by plucking off the yellow leaves so these will go in the bin i think that's pretty much it for that one okay and just do that whenever they go yellow sort of thing yeah just continue to do that the other thing you want to do is once the flower dies, you want to deadhead it. Once the flower dies, what I suggest you do is cut it right at the very bottom of the stem of the flower stem. So these flowers here, I'm not going to cut any of these because they're just coming out. But I have cut the ones that were dead before. Okay? And as soon as you cut them, the energy in the plant will be reverted to other parts of the plant. So, you know, if you leave it, what will happen is it'll use all its energy to produce seeds. It will create less flowers because it's using all its energy to make, you know, make seeds. And you don't want that. So you just pluck, you deadhead it. You deadhead the flowers. That's basically it. So put it in a very sunny position. Give it lots of water. But make sure that it's, you know, the water is well drained. Okay, you don't want it to be sitting in like a pool of water either. Okay, so it's well drained soil, but well, well watered soil. And fertilizer every two weeks and pluck off all its yellow leaves. And you will find that if you do all those things, you'll get lots and lots of flowers. These gerberas will flower for you throughout the whole warmer months. And they may go into hibernation during winter and then they'll come back again in spring. And also the other thing with gerberas is you can actually bring them inside when they're flowering. So when they're flowered, just bring them inside. It gives you a pop of colour for your home. And then once they've finished flowering, just take them back outside and put them in the sun. Great. Well, happy gardening. And I hope that you, um, your gerberas have a lot of flowers. Okay, see you next time. Bye. Are we kidding?